smoke till I'm blowing the steamer. This ain't what you want, boy. Lil Dirk single. I'm stacking chips, no Pringles, all blues, no singles. Name ringing bells all winter, no jingle. Internet shooter, yeah, you roll with your fingers. USC dunk, stepping. Hey, what's good with everybody, man? I hope everybody's having a productive day, feeling blessed, and like I always say, it's one live, one chance. We only got one chance to do this right. Let's get it done. This, I'm going to take it back to some of my uh, CYA war stories, just based on the fact one of my homies who's actually a, he's actually a friend, a good friend, and also a bulldog, and I was actually locked up with his homies, and he wanted me to tell the story. And they're actually crazy little, cool little war stories. You know, you win some, you lose some, but hey, it's all it's all about having heart when it comes to these kind of situations. So with that being said, man, hit that subscription button, hit that like, always leave a comment. For those that ever been to the California Youth Authority, even though I don't wish this upon the youth, if you have been in my predicament, been in my situation, what year were you guys in CYA? What was your CYA number? Mine was 87514, got locked up in 2001. What was your fondest memory? What was your greatest memory? Or what was that one dude you met that met your match? That one individual that actually gave you a run for the money if you got into a fight in CYA? Because here's mine. In OH Close in Stockton, we were able to program with the Bulldogs. There wasn't that much, but there was quite a few. I remember my first fight with a Bulldog. His last name is Lorenzo. He went by Gangsta Dog, but I think he changed his name. Everybody's saying he changed his name, but he was tall, real skinny. Couldn't fight though. I don't know why. He's, he he fought a lot. Everybody you, you pretty much picked on him and utilized him if they wanted to fight a bulldog. He was from um he was from the city of Fresno. But in CYA you have blind spots. You know you have places where you you can actually take somebody, get into a fight for like maybe 10, 15 seconds. You know get your money's worth and then come out and have a a war story to brag about and make him. You know, impress the homies. But that's what I was. I was 13 years old looking up to all these older homies in CYA trying to be that, that kid. That kid that had heart. That kid that was always fighting. That kid that was willing to get him up with anybody. Even though half the time I was losing half my fights, it didn't, it didn't matter to me. I, I, it, I still wanted to fight. There was a homie that was a porter who used to clean the showers. His name was Johnny Boy. He was from Avenue Vadi Lomas. And see, he used to always set up the blind spots because, you know, he would turn on all the showers, go in there, clean the drains, mop and everything. So the showers would get steamy and it was glass doors so we can go in the shower and fight. In our shower shoes, you just had to be careful because you could slip and fall. So I tell Johnny, boy, I was like, hey, bro, I want to get down with this bulldog right here, bro. I, I, I want to run it in with him. And he's like, all right, if we don't trip, I'm going to let you know when to come in. But this time we had to do things different. We actually, when you go to shower, like I said, there's like a wall like right here. You walk in and there's two walls right here. So you can block the from the waist down so the female staff didn't see you naked. Well, we go in there and I hide on this side of the wall. The bulldog hides on this side of the wall. And Johnny Boy comes in. He hands us both two t-shirts each. And I'm like, hey, bro, what the f is this? He was like, bro, wrap them on your knees. I'm like, for what? What do I need these on my knees for? He's like, bro, wrap him on your knees, bro. You guys are going to get down on your guys' knees. I'm like, huh? And the Bulldog's like, damn, dog. I ain't trying to do all that, dog. I'm like, he's like, bro, y'all, if y'all fighting and, and standing up, bro, you can still see each other through the the through the, through the mist, bro, and through the windows, bro. You guys are going to get caught. You might as well just go find the door around the open. I looked at the Bulldog, and I was like, man, what you trying to do? He's like, let's do it, dog. So we're, now we tie these big old T-shirts on our knees. And we get down on our knees. But you know how hard it is to fight on your knees? So we're both on our knees, just scraping our knees. And then the worst part about it is the drains were flooded too. So we're just splashing water all on our boxers and our thighs and legs after we just showered. We're swimming in everybody else's ass water. But we're fighting. And like I said, this dude can't fight. You know, he's tall. He's taller than a lot of individuals. And even when he fights, he puts his head down and he starts swimming. You know, he starts, you know, he's swimming all crazy. So back then, I didn't, I, I did I was still learning to fight myself. So I used to fight like this. Like I'd put my head all the way back and I'd be like, ah, 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 trying to get it in. So I tried to do that and he caught me with the banger. Bam. Hits me right here. Man, within two seconds, I felt my eye go, whoop, and it just gets swelled up. I was like, oh, damn, my eye's swollen. So we're fighting. He puts his head on my chest. I'm punching him like this. 
we don't do nothing. We just fighting on our knees, just slapping water in each other's faces. We don't do much. But we go about a good 20, 30 seconds, and, you know, he goes back to this bulldog homie, says he fought me. I go back to my northern homie, say I fought him. We go to bed. I wake up the next day. I fold my bed. I grab my shower shoes, and I grab my toothpaste to go brush my teeth. And I just seen everybody just, like, brushing their teeth, staring at me. I'm like, well, why does everybody keep staring at me? And then the homies are like, damn, fool, look at your face. And I look at my face, and I see a big old, my whole eye is just swollen black. Black all right here, black right here, black right here. It's it's not closed, but it's just swollen. And I'm like, no way. That bulldog that hit me, Lorenzo, he sees it and he don't say much. And with the YA games, the homies kind of pump you up. The homies kind of get in your head because they want to see what you could do. And me being so young-minded and easily influenced and being vulnerable in my head, I felt played. I felt played because everybody else started feeling played. And everybody else started looking at me like, damn, bro, you lost the fight to that fool. That fool can't even fight. And that's the kind of, that's the things you're going to be subjected to. For, I'm speaking on behalf of the youth. You're going to be subjected to that kind of peer pressure. And that peer pressure is wrong. And you shouldn't have to worry about impressing another man. But I did. And I learned the hard way because after hearing everybody, like, just look at me going, psst, psst. Damn, I wouldn't let him do that to my face. Just throwing dumb subliminal hints in my head. I actually get dressed. Wait till that dude gets dressed. And then I rush him on his bunk and I end up going to the hole for three days. And when I came back, I chopped it up with him, talked to him. I was like, hey, bro, you caught me with a hot one. I just couldn't go out like that. And he, he understood. But that individual was always getting called out for some reason. I think... I think because he couldn't fight, but he was willing to fight, people looked at it like, man, that was an easy win. I'm not even going to say that I beat him in the shower. I'm not, and I'm not even going to say I beat him one-on-one -on -one when I rushed him by his bunk. We just fought. I looked at it like just a regular fight. I just looked at it like I just needed some redemption, some get back because my eye was just pitch black. Well, I fight like maybe two more Bulldogs in OH close, but I wind up paroling staying on the streets for about four or five months and i wound up coming back for shooting the school bus in Telaria, the a school bus that came from pixley so i get another year and two months attached to my to my sentence and i go i go back i go to Preston this time well in Preston, i went to tamarack i went to i went to tamarack for, for a few times for a couple of fights just fighting some cribs and bloods and whatever else in Tamarack, I meet the homie named Cuete. He's from Plainview. He had been there for like four years. He's doing juvenile life. Got to know the individual. Chopped it up with him a few times. Told him what I was in there for. Every time I went to Tamarack, he was always there. He was pretty much a porter. He had a, his own cell there. I'd never seen him on the line. And one day, they actually, the CCO, the, there was the, and Preston, they had the Bulldogs on site, so the Bulldogs could not program. I don't know why, I don't know what took place, but every time a Bulldog got released from the hole, the Northerners would rush him back to back to back, and he'd go to the hole, and you'd never see this individual again, right? But Cuete decides to take it upon himself to let the facility know, let the administration know, and sign off on it saying that, it, that we're willing to program with the Bulldogs. He said it was just to get all the Bulldogs to be released so that we could start fighting them and rushing them. But by him doing that, the, the administration and, the, and the, the youth authority made it a policy that we will no longer segregate and house the Bulldogs in that state. They're going to run. They're going to walk the yard. And they pretty much said for the Northerners that continue to rush these Bulldogs, they're going to be the ones placing that seg while the Bulldogs stay on the main line, on the line. So it backfired on Cuete, and Cuete got put on site for that. By the homies. You know, little kid Wyatt Games, he didn't need to be put on site for that, but he did. And they actually released him from being a porter in Tamarack and made him walk the line with us. So he had it bad from both sides. If you guys heard this old school song, it's like a old it's a old school like freestyle song or old school slap. He's like uh, it's uh, the Atomic Dog. That's the name of the song, the Atomic Dog. But you know, see how he, the chorus says, I'm a dog catcher, dog catcher. Well, I decided to think it was cool. I, there was an individual from Eastside Fresno named Boney. Individual you see in the thumbnail. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to fight this dude. Not knowing this boy had major hands. And when I mean major, I mean dumbass men's. His knuckle game was up to par. So I go up to him and I was like, what's up, bro? And the Bulldogs, when they shake their hands, you know, the Southsiders go like that and they do the bumps. Northerners do the, 
throw the E, the N, and the E, and that's it. Bulldogs, they shake their hands and they hit their palms together. And why? So I walked up to him and I shook his hand and I was introducing myself. So he meant to, he shook my hand and he said, you saw Fresno Bulldog Boney. And he tried to hit me with the palm and I caught his palm and I said, I'm a dog catcher, bitch. It didn't take that boy nothing but two seconds but to grab my shirt and headbutt me. If you guys can see closely, the individual I told a story to, he broke my nose. My, there's a bone that sticks out right here. So my nose was crooked. I felt my nose crooked. It was just like this. And my eyes got water and I felt my eyes just go puffy. So all I could do now was just backpedal and start punching him. And he's just putting beaters on me. And why, hey, if you lose a fight, you lose a fight. The homies ain't going to jump in unless I fall and he kicks me on the ground. That's the only time the homies jump in. So he's beating, my, he's beating the, the brakes off me all in front of my homies. I can't see. My eyes are watery. My face is swollen within two seconds. We get sprayed. I go to medical, wash my face off. I'm on fire. And the doctor's just rubbing my nose. And he's trying to fix my nose. And when he cracks my nose back into its place, just blood just starts pouring everywhere. Now I'm walking around the facility with my eyes, just two black eyes about that big for two weeks, almost three. Trust me when I tell you this, man, I, I don't mind losing the fight. But I was, that was just one I wasn't willing to run back, bro, because I was like, bro, that boy had major hands. And anybody in the facility in person at the time, all my homies that I can outline that I remember that were there will tell you the same thing. Bones, Boney had hands. So you had to be careful when you fought that individual because he fought a bunch of other Northerners and he fought Northerners two or three times bigger than him. And he did. He gave him a run for the money. I can't honestly say I ever seen Boney lose a fight in YA. So that was one of the dudes that I can actually remember that was actual from Fresno Bulldogs that, you know, he, his knuckle game was up there, bro. You really can't, you really couldn't fade that individual. Then there was this individual named Weicho. There was a couple of Bulldogs, like five or six, that were in when they shut down Tamarack, finally saying that it was illegal and cruel and unusual punishment, that it was like a dungeon, you know, it was cruel to kids. And they, they opened up Ironwood. There's five lines on the top of the hill. You know, there was Hawthorne, there was like uh, Evergreen, there was Greenbrier, and then there was like two, there was one down there right next to Ironwood. I don't remember what it was. But it was only blocked off by a fence. A fence may be taller than me, and I'm 5'10". It was just fenced off. So Northerners would program for like an hour on a the yard. Then the Southerners would come out as a group, program for an hour in the yard and shower. The Bulldogs and the Bloods and the Crips, it'd be like that every day. Everybody gets, we don't, then we don't mingle together because we'll just fight each other. Well, the Bulldogs had came out one day and I wasn't in, was in Ironwood, but I was in the building next to it. I think it started with a D. I'm not sure what it was called. And I was talking to the homeboy Drifter from VCP. We were talking about uh, Sylvester from Pilgrim Street. He was going to come out soon. So we're going to have to kick it off with the Southerners. And um, we were playing basketball on handball court. And the Southsiders were by the pull-up bars closest to the fence. And this bulldog named Weasel, I think he rallied up all the bulldogs because they weren't releasing these bulldogs. These bulldogs had been in the hole for like almost four to five months and they got tired of it. So they were just trying to stir up a bunch of ruckus and get up out of there, get out of the facility, get transferred. All we hear is the yard, the yard the alarm go down. So we look to see who's fighting and we just see all the Bulldogs hopping that fence from the ad seg run. You just hear them barking, hitting the fence, screaming out Fresno Bulldog, Bulldog this, Bulldog that, and rush all the Southsiders. There was like a Southsider crew from L.A., and just rush them. And I just see like maybe 12, 15 people just getting off on each other. And we're like, oh, shit, them Bulldogs really hopped the fucking fence. And they got their money's worth. They went back to the hole. Some of them stayed. Some of them got transferred because some of them are a little older. So they went while some of them wind up going to Chad and do it. Some of them got transferred to OH clothes if they were like 15 and younger. Because when you turn 15 and 16... Always close doesn't really want you there. You can stay there, but they don't really want you there. They'd rather put you on Preston. But Preston, where now Nellis has shut down, Paso Robles was shooting a lot of inmates up there. Preston was getting overpopulated. It was getting real crowded, real bad. You know, sometimes we couldn't even go to the hole because the holes were filled up because so many gangs that were coming from down south from LA that beef with each other. So I was seeing fights every day. Black P-Stones against the Bloods, against all kinds of crib hoods. He had Main Street Mafia Crips going at it with these Crips and these Crips. 
You know, it was it turned into Gang Bang Central all over again. Because, you know, homies from up north, from different cities, not too many much Southerners. We just fight Southerners. But we're talking about a bunch of Southerners coming up fighting each other. Crips and Bloods fighting Southerners from L.A. Then you had Crips and Bloods fighting each other. You had Bloods fighting, Bloods, Crips fighting. So every, everybody that came from down south, you know, everybody from up north just kind of took a sideline seat because the Bay Area sticks together. We're just all watching everybody come from down south just, just maul each other to death. But the Bulldogs wind up hopping the fence. And I always remember that for Weicho because Weicho went around the facility. He was actually one of the ones that actually stayed. And every building he went into, he'd fight like two northerners back to back. Wouldn't even care. He'd fight them in the blinds. And he handled his business. He didn't go out like that. And he actually was a good fighter too. And that's what always tripped me out about a lot of these kids in, Bull in YA. A lot of these Bulldogs, very few lose fights. A lot of them would win fights, but a lot of them just maintained it their ground. I used to always trip out on like, man, man, what are these dudes? Do they, they, do they really have like dog fights out in Fresno, man? Because these, these dudes come up here, we're just ready to fight, ready to brawl. I didn't wind up fighting Weecho, but I wound up finding one of his homies, man. His name is Daffy Dog. I mean, his his name was Daffy Dog. Daffy Dog was actually from Fresno, but it was only because we were walking to Chow. And I was talking to somebody else, man. This this dude, he came for, he was like, he he didn't say he was Mexican. He said he was Latino, that he was from a different, he was Puerto Rican and all that stuff. So we were talking about ethnicities. He was, he had came from the East Coast, came from to the West Coast, caught a case out here where he was from, came to jail. He said, he was pretty much just bragging about the East Coast and how the Latino gangs are different. Like he kept calling them Latino gangs. He wouldn't call them Mexican gangs. So we got into like a little debate, a little argument about it. And I was just pretty much like, man, I'm a, I'm, I was like, I'm a Hicana, bro. I'm Chicana, bro. I don't believe it. I don't even know what Latino is. And I was just getting at him like that. Like, I was getting a little bit annoyed with this individual's conversation. He goes, man, how you going to say you Mexican, but you look white, bro? You're probably mixed. And I was like, and I got mad. And I was like, bro, I ain't no, I ain't no motherfucking mutt, bro. Didn't even realize Daffy was right there. And, you know, they take that word, that and Bufro, they take personal. And I just seen Daffy Dog look back at me. He's like, hey, bro, what the fuck you say, dog? And I looked at him, I was like, what? what who, was I even talking to you? He goes, who you calling a mutt? I was like, first of all, I wasn't calling you a mutt, but I said, I ain't no mutt. Didn't even matter. Right there on our way to Chow Hall, we just squared up and started squabbing. And we started fighting each other. Even fight. I didn't get the best of him, he didn't get the best of me. It was just a clean little fight. It only, we only fought for like 10 seconds, bro, and the cops came running and sprayed us. But Weecho was right there. Weecho watched the whole thing happen. But I tripped out because there was a there was quite a few. I met a lot. His last name was Solis. I don't know what they actually call him. I think they called him Rude Dog. You know, he was used to he used to fight a lot, at least once a week, twice a week in the blinds. You know, that individual never go out. But I did watch that individual. Like I said, his last name is Solis. He knocked out the homie Buddy from Pilgrim Street from Stockton. And we actually had to go up with the Bulldogs for that. You know, there was a bunch of YA games that were going on, but the reason why I wanted to make this video because even though we had gang differences and gang ties and you know, we fought each other, when we were fighting, you know, a lot of times we get along with each other. You know, I, I, I wound up becoming hella cool with Southerners and down South. And, you know, we chop it up. We play dominoes. We, we shoot handball together. We used to love Northerners and Southerners or Northerners and Bulldogs. We, we'd gamble with each other. That handball court was the place to gamble. You know, we took pride showing up, man. Southerners, would, you know, roll their sock, pull their socks up. You know, homies would be right there pulling, tying up their, their waist. And they, we shoot the handball and just gamble $50 games. So, you know, we had to get along with these individuals at some point. But honestly, I think, like I said, the California Youth Authority, that kind of facility, you know, they're just made for individuals who are young-minded and don't know no better to go and gangbang. I think they just, it's just, I think that facility is just modeled, I think it's modeled around the idea that, you know, we're going to put them in here and we're going to make them fight each other until they get it out their system and until they learn their lesson and until they, until they realize that, you know, this ain't even worth it no more. And honestly, it has an adverse effect on the youth because we go over there thinking that, you know, this is the thing to do. We don't have nothing else on our, on our hands to do besides fight each other. And that's what I did. But I want to say rest in peace to Weecho because I did hear recently that he did pass away when he got out of YA. You know, it sucks and it's unfortunate that, you know, he didn't get the chance to change. He didn't get a chance to come out and live life. He didn't get a chance to reach adulthood and, you know, become something better, make something of himself. And just as much as he threw his, he, he, 
just as fast as he threw his life away to end up in YA, he didn't even get the opportunity to come home because he got done, gunned down in the streets of Fresno County for whatever reason. But that's my message to the youth. Like, man, sometimes you might not get that chance to change. You might, get, you might not ever get that chance to do better because something from your past is going to catch up to you. Somebody's going to recognize you. Somebody's going to retaliate against you. It's that fast. One thing my mom always taught me is like, man, you may think you're really badass, man, but there's always going to be somebody bigger and better than you. And I had to learn that even from YA fights and even on the streets now. You know, we can walk around perceiving ourselves like, yeah, I got hands. I can fight. I'm willing to fight anybody. Just like my mom said, there's always going to be someone bigger and better than you. And that's going to be the individual that can possibly take your life if you don't change now. Because we reap what we sow. What we've done in the past is eventually going to come back to us. You know, karma is going to come back around. You know, when the tables turn, what goes around comes around. And I can only hope that you guys make that change now before you hurt somebody now that's going to retaliate later. And you don't get that chance to change like we didn't get a chance to change. Like we didn't get a chance to live his life. I don't care that he was a bulldog and that he was my enemy back then, man. That's still a kid that, they, that lost his life at an early age and didn't get a chance to enjoy life like I'm enjoying right now, like you guys are enjoying right now. So I hope you guys can uh, keep that in mind if you guys still wish to continue to pursue this lifestyle of gangbanging and being where you're from and representing who you are because you could lose your life that easy and that quick, just like that young man did. So with that being said, man, I hope you like my message. I hope you guys like my video. To this day, I still got that little bump on my nose. So like I always say, man, it's one life, one chance, man. We only got one chance to do this right. Let's get it done. Peace.